This is Center Stage, putting your firm in the spotlight by highlighting business owners and other industry experts to help take your firm to the next level. Hey everyone, and welcome to Center Stage. I am your host, John Henson, and this week we are talking about one of the biggest concepts and, and books that I think can really change the way that you operate your business if you don't already have this mindset already, uh, and that is Michael Gerber's E-Myth. Um, and even more, I am excited and honored to have Michael himself joining us this week to talk about it. Michael, thanks for joining us. Well, my delight. Thank you for having me here. Awesome. So yeah, for those who are just kind of unfamiliar, who may not have heard of the book or anything like that, what exactly is the E-Myth? Well, the E-Myth is the entrepreneurial myth. And essentially, it says that everybody who goes into business by themselves um, believes that they are an entrepreneur, when in fact, they're far from it. Indeed, the vast majority of small business owners or practitioners, whether those be attorneys, whether those be accountants, whether those be chiropractors, whether those be um, HVAC contractors, whomever, whatever they might be, um, aren't entrepreneurs at all. They're technicians suffering from an entrepreneurial seizure. According to EMIT terms, it means they don't go to work on their business, on their practice, to design, build, launch, and grow their practice as a part from them. They go to work in it to become their practice, doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it, and completely miss the point of an enterprise, of growth, of scalability, of all of the terms that are critical if anybody's going to succeed at anything. <clears throat> Excuse yeah. me. No, yeah. And, and so, and for people who aren't familiar, you actually have a, a very specific version of the E-Myth for attorneys. There's a book, you know, dedicated to attorneys. And I think, and it's great because, you know, in law school, and you're aware of this, you know, people are just trained on how to be a lawyer. They're not trained on how to actually run a law firm. And so obviously you get this problem that's kind of growing where lawyers go out, they start their own law firm, but they don't have those business skills. So what can, what can lawyers do, business owner lawyers do to prevent their business from failing? Like what are just some, some more broad strokes and, and things that they should keep in mind that they can use to prevent their business and their law firm from going under? <clears throat> well, <clears throat> first of all, they have to have growth in mind. In short, rather than um, getting enough um, business in the door to support them, to create an income for them, um, to provide them with a job, doing it, doing it, doing it, busy, 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 busy. They need to separate themselves from that practice, to look at the practice from above as something apart from them, not of them. And until they look at it apart from them, they'll never gain that objectivity that's absolutely critical if there is to be an entrepreneurial possibility in the creation of, of a legal practice that can grow, 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 grow. Yeah. And, and you know, one of the things, and I, and I think this is where we kind of got this terminology from, but there's a difference between working in your firm and working on your firm. And, and what, what's kind of the differentiation there for you in that regard? Well, it's so transparent the minute you look at it. Yeah. Uh, when we say work on it, you immediately see that there's distance between you and it. You are rising above it to look down upon it, to see the entirety of it, the operating methodology of it, the purpose of it, the point of it beginning at all, other than to provide you with income as a legal professional. You've got to separate yourself as that legal professional to think of yourself as an entrepreneurial professional. And the minute you begin to make that distinction, then the questions become, so what is the difference between being an entrepreneurial professional and a legal professional? And can one be both? And of course, one absolutely can be both. 
um, provided one understands the distinction between those two roles. The distinction between those two roles have given birth to all the work we have done at Emith Worldwide, at Michael E. Gerber Companies, at the company I call Radical You, and the company I call The Dreaming Room. So effectively, we need to bring in that legal mind to transform it to an entrepreneurial mind in the process of asking the question, why am I here? What do I intend to do? And how in the world am I going to do it once I'm clear about what, in quotes, it is? Right. Yeah. And, you know, I, I've been to several <clears throat> bar conferences. And one thing that, that just blows my mind is I, I get this comment a lot. You know, people come to us. Obviously, we're a marketing company. We say, hey, we're going to help you build more, get more referrals. We're going to help you attract better clients. And, and one of the things that we often hear is I don't need any more business. And it's and it's like I we're kind of in that constant growth mindset. But to hear someone be like, no, no, I don't want to grow. Like what what kind of issues could that possibly create where you're just kind of like content in sort of just kind of where you are and you don't you don't want more business. Well you, you do understand the reason they're saying that is I don't want to get busier. Right. I'm, I'm too busy now. Right. I don't have enough time to work with new clients. Therefore, the last thing in the world I need is a marketing company whose sole purpose it is to create new clients. Because if I were to get new clients, I couldn't serve those new clients because I'm up to my ears right now with the clients I've got. Yeah. So you understand up to my ears right now with the clients I've got is the technician speaking to you, doing it, doing it, doing it, busy, 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 busy. And the last thing in the world that technician wants to think about is creating more work. So when you say more clients, they think more work. And the last thing they need is more work. Yeah. Understand the minute you raise the entrepreneur within them, you suddenly see the conflict between the two. Yeah. The entrepreneur needs time and a very different form of attention to begin to focus on why I'm here in the first place. In short, asking the seminal questions about why am I here? What am I here to do? Who am I, et cetera, and so forth. Those existential questions that the attorney you're speaking to who says, I don't want any more clients, I don't want, isn't asking at all. There are no existential questions being asked in a small, um, satisfied legal firm. Yeah. None. Because they're doing what they went to school to learn how to do. Yeah. I'm practicing law. I'm pra Thank God I've got the clients I've got. And the last thing I want to do is to get busier, 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 because it's going to distract me from living the life that I've got. Yeah. And, and so I think this is a good, good transition to kind of the other aspect that I wanted to talk to you about. Um, Cause we talked, we've had several episodes on this show about, you know, delegating and, and automating and just how valuable your time is as a business owner. And I think one of the biggest parts of the e-myth that stood out to me when I read it was when you talked about McDonald's and, you know, everything aside about, you know, cultural perception of McDonald's and how it may be cheap food and may not be good for you. That's not the point. The point that you were talking about was how they systematized everything and how they were able to become so, so much more efficient compared to um, other places that it allowed them to scale and just allowed them to grow as much as they did. Um, what, what sort of advice do you have for lawyers when it comes to systemizing, systematizing their processes, potentially scaling their business a little bit so that they can kind of be more in that entrepreneurial mindset and have more time to focus on growth? Well, again, you have to understand Ray Kroc didn't start McDonald's to run one hamburger store. 
Ray Kroc didn't start McDonald's to open a store. Ray Kroc started McDonald's to create a movement, meaning tens of thousands of stores. Are you kidding me? Tens of thousands of stores. Yeah. So the minute you get that, the minute you get that's what Ray Kroc set out to do. That's what Steve Jobs set out to do. That's what every great entrepreneur sets out to do. You immediately understand what's missing in this picture. No attorney set out to do that. And so the first and most important question is, so what are you going to do for the rest of your life? Why are you here? What drives you? What is your dream? And so the very critical first steps, and that's why I said the dreaming room is so critical, is to understand who an entrepreneur really is. An entrepreneur is four distinct different personalities, a dreamer, a thinker, a storyteller, and a leader. So understand you have to be a dreamer, you have to be a thinker, you have to be a storyteller, and you have to be a leader in order to awaken the new entrepreneur within these attorneys. Yeah. And that happens in the dreaming room. So I have a dream, I have a vision, I have a purpose, I have a mission. You understand no attorney has a dream, a vision, a purpose, and a mission. So before we even start talking about replicating yourself, before we even start talking about systems, before we even start talking about all of the hardware and software that's critical um, to improve the way you do what you do, you first of all have to reshape what it is you're determined to do. And that happens at the very beginning. So it's like you have to go and speak to your attorneys and say, look, we're not gonna talk about your practice today. We're going to start with a blank piece of paper and beginner's mind. We're going to start before you started your practice, because this is not about old co. This is not about fixing what you've got. This is about new co. This is about creating what you want. The first and most critical question you've got to pose to every single attorney on the planet is that question. What do you want? Not what you want, what do you want today? Not what do you want in your practice? Not what do you want to fix what you've got? What do you want to create who you're going to be? Mm. So let's start at the very beginning before you go into business to look at how one goes into the business of life, the business of law, the business of whatever it is we're here to do in order to determine the size and substance of it. So I'm suggesting to you that you want to awaken the entrepreneur within them. That's the very first task, to awaken the entrepreneur within them, not to start marketing who they are, not to start marketing what they do, not to start getting more clients. Getting more clients is simply fixing a broken business that in fact is a very, very, very serious waste of time. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that, that's, that's really, really insightful. I mean, I, I know I'm learning a lot and I've, my wheels are turning now, just some different things that we can do. And, and, you know, well, that's a great question because you said your business, but you understand they don't have a business. They've got a job, right? They don't have a business. They got a job. Mm. Um, and their job is practicing law. Yeah. So understand the minute you change that conversation from let's grow your business, um, let's give you more work to do. Um, you've got to restructure, reframe the conversation with yeah. every single one of them. The minute you reframe that conversation, you understand you're going to be talking differently to different people for a different reason than the way you're describing it now. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's, that's really incredible. Um, why, you know, and, and kind of the one thing that I, that I thought about, you know, yeah. What do you say 
to that to that lawyer you know, maybe it's the same lawyer who said, I don't need any more business. You know, what if, it, you know, what do you say to this lawyer who's like, well, you know, I, it's just me. I live in a 30,000 person town. I'm just here to help people craft an estate plan. I'm just here to help people get divorced or whatever it is. You know, what more can I do? You know, how do you, how do you really tap into that? Because, you know, I, I think a lot of times, especially a lot of these small town lawyers, they're like, well, I'm just here you know, I'm just going to be this one man shop. I'm going to have this certain number of clients because I'm in this small town, you know, where I don't think they see a, a clear path. So, you know, what, what can they do to, to have that illuminated? Well, you understand, I've already said it. Yeah. I've already said it. Welcome to the dreaming room. Right. Yeah. If what you've said to me is the only thing you're looking forward to for the rest of your freaking life, then there's nothing for us to talk about. You've already died. So hear me, you're already dead. As far as I'm concerned, it's a waste of time. Mm. On the other hand, if there's someone in you nagging you and saying, is this all there is? You mean to tell me over the next 30 years of my life, all I'm going to do is what I'm doing this moment today. That's my future. Yeah. If that's what you're saying to me, then there's nothing for us to talk about. Mm. If what you're saying on the other hand is you've got a serious question about the choice you've made. That in fact, there must be more to life than just practicing law in Podunk, Indiana. Right. There must be more to life than just doing it, doing it, doing it, busy, 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 busy. There must be more to life than what you've opted out to do. The question becomes, how do you discover what that is? That's what we want to have a conversation about. How do you discover what that is? We'd love to have you discover what that is and engage with us in that conversation before we ever talk about how to do anything that's needed to do to make you more comfortable, let alone give you more business. Yeah. Because if we gave you more business, all you do is burn through it. Because you've only got so much time. You've got an, only so much energy. You've only got so much desire. You've only got so much, so much, so much, so much. And anybody who's only got so much is never going anywhere but where they are right now. And unfortunately, it gets worse. It gets worse when you're 20 years older than you are right now. Yeah. Yeah. Got it? Well, so the question becomes, so then what? And that's the first conversation I'm suggesting that you need to have with every single attorney you talk to. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I, I, man, I, my wheels are turning this. I feel like this became more of an episode for me than it did <laughs> for, for our audience. But I know, I think, I think you had a ton of great insight there. And, and one of the things that I, that I like about the book is that you, you don't just have the book and you, you know, and it's just out there. Like you have a ton of resources that are available for people who read the book uh, that can go on this journey. And, and so uh, how can people get in touch with your company? Um, talk about any resources that you have available that can help people out. Um, it's in, very, in very simple. Um, go to inthedreamingroom.com. I-N-T-H-E dreamingroom.com. Inthedreamingroom.com. And you'll discover the dreaming room. And in the dreaming room, you'll discover your dream, your vision, your purpose, and your mission. And the beauty of it is it's online. So the fact of the matter is you can enroll right now and I'll take you through the process to discover what your dream, your vision, your purpose, and your mission might be if indeed you wished to transform the state of practice, of law, or of whatever it is you're here to serve um, in your life. Because you can do exactly what Ray Kroc did. You can open up your practice in every small community throughout these United States. Just think about that. 
in every small community throughout these United States. But you'd have to ask yourself the question, why? What is that practice there to do? What difference is that practice going to make? Is it simply going to be another legal practice in Podunk, wherever? Or is it going to be a uniquely differentiated legal practice that's there to provide a breakthrough in your clients' lives in a way that legal practices are not designed to do. So suddenly you see something magnificent waiting. Something magnificent is waiting to happen. I'm suggesting that that's why we're born in the image of God, to create, to create a world fit for God to create a world in which our services are serving a higher purpose that in fact distinguishes our higher purpose and why we're here from everyone else in the so-called legal business, marketing business, business of business, chiropractic business, you name it, you name it, you name it, you name it. Yeah. Awesome. So um, I do have one final question for you before I let you go. It's a question that we ask all of our guests here. And I know that you have a depth uh, of answers to this question. So I, I, I hope this will be a fairly easy one for you to, to come up with real quick. But uh, if you had one piece of advice, one final piece of advice for our lawyers out there, what would it be? Stop doing what you're doing and go to the dreaming room. It's the one most important thing every single attorney in the world can do. Because until you do that, there is no opportunity. There is no possibility for discovering something uniquely your own that you'll not discover doing what you're doing. You can't get there from here. You can't get there from the practice you've got. You can't get there by thinking about getting more clients. You can't get there by doing it, doing it, doing it, busy, busy, busy. Never could, never will, never would. It just isn't going to happen. And that's why we created the Dreaming Room in the first place, to give you the opportunity to start your life anew. Wow. Just think, to start your life anew. Yeah, that that's incredible. I mean, look, admittedly, I am a hard person to um, get fired up with, you know, I like the the and, and not not calling you this, but like a lot of the motivational gurus and life coaches out there like that's not my scene. You know, I'm not it's not mine at all either. Right. But <laughs> believe me. Yeah. But I can I can honestly say, like, I, I have been really inspired by this episode and, and by all of the insight that you've brought. So I really do appreciate it. Um, that is going to do it for us this week. Uh, thank you all for all the ratings and reviews that you continue to leave on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, wherever you're listening to the show. Um, and by the way, let me introduce it's yeah, yeah. a new dreaming room.com. Yes. The new dreaming room.com. Got it. That's the link. Got it. Okay. I will make sure that that is in the show notes so that everybody can go and check that out Perfect. as well. Um, yeah, definitely. If you have not read E-Myth, if you haven't read E-Myth Attorney, I highly, highly recommend uh, reading those books uh, and then checking out uh, the dreaming room.com uh, link in the show notes. And um, yeah, just seeing all of the things that, that Michael and his company uh, can help you accomplish with your firm. Uh, that is going to do it for us this week on Center Stage. Michael, thank you again so much for joining us. Pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for listening. To learn more, go to spotlightbranding.com slash center stage.